Yes. Good evening. My name is uh, Rick Clear. I'm the Dean of Arts here at the University of Virginia. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome all of you here tonight. I went out there before the meeting to clean up my car, and as I did that, I got I'm not quite sure how many full cars we want to turn out tonight. All right. So I'm pleased to see that we have at least this many people. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I want to say a special welcome to those of you who uh, aren't here from the university. I see a number of you who are. But I'm especially delighted to see people whom I don't recognize and whom I assume will come outside of the university. Uh, I don't know how many of you know, but this is a difficult time for our university, perhaps for a lot of universities. Uh, people aren't sure anymore, certain politicians aren't sure anymore what universities are for. They think they're all about job training and they make their decisions on that basis. I like to think of tonight as a classic example of what the universities are about. Bringing together people with different interests, different sets of expertise, to think in a relatively disinterested, sensible way about issues of public policy. Uh, <laughs> there's one other thing that I think universities are also about, uh, and I just wanted to give you a brief sense of that by reading you one sentence from tonight's speakers biography or her web page. She talks about uh, her experience in getting, getting a university education, mentions having met a professor along the way, and says of that professor, he encouraged her to develop a kind of intellectual peripheral vision so that by looking at things from an angle instead of straight on, she could notice patterns and connections that were otherwise hidden. I'd like to think that that's what we are doing here at the university for all of our students, and the more that we turn out people like our speaker tonight, the happier all of us will be. I welcome now uh, Trevor Harry, who will introduce tonight's speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. I think you could be that young if you believe the works. Anyway, it's so wonderful to see all of you here. We are intrepid people, are we not? Okay. <laughs> such a night as this. I'm sure you all spend hours like I've been shoveling walks and so on, cleaning on cars to get here. Before I continue, I want to ask a question, and I'm not going to explain why I'm asking. Are there any teenagers here in this crowd? Anybody who has the word teen at the end of their age number? One? It's a heartbreaking and powerful story that 
we all need to know about. It's about prairie people and their bonds to a vast sweep of land, the Cypress Hills, a landscape that still vibrates with its legacy of tragedy and loss. From the copious research that Penny did for, for this book, she became very well versed in the public policy decisions that can lead to those kind of tragedies, dividing people from land that had been shared in public commons. Tonight, her topic, The Uncertain Future of Our PFRA Community Pastures, is perhaps a moment in our history when we can still avert another tragedy falling out of public policy that, no matter how well intentioned, may once again lead to loss, division, and bitterness over land that is meant to be shared and not privately parceled out. I can think of no one more qualified to inspire, to inspire us to face this moment with courage and grace, the same courage and grace that she has used every day in her career as one of Canada's most beloved naturalist authors. Please help me welcome to the podium the winner of the 2012 Hillary Weston Writers Trust Rise, Prize for Nonfiction, our most respected defender of prairie and prairie people, Canada staff.